Hello dear viewer, welcome to episode 4 of Brain Care Series. Today we are going to discuss the relationship between our brain performance and blood sugar levels. We are going to see why it is important to maintain the blood sugar level within the normal range and how high or very low blood sugar level affects the brain performance. This video is very important for those who have type 2 diabetes, so if you are in that condition, kindly watch this video up to the end. Let's get into it. As we all know, our brain is the command center responsible for all our body functions. And for it to do this, it requires energy. This energy it gets from the blood in the form of glucose. That is what we call the blood sugar. Though in rare occasions, the brain can get the energy in form of ketones, which is a product of breakdown of fats in the liver during fasting. The brain takes about 2% of our body, but it uses over 20% of the total energy that is produced in the body. It is so rich in neurons that are always active. As much as our brain requires a lot of energy, it is also very sensitive to blood sugar level. Under normal circumstances, our body is able to regulate the blood sugar level such that when there is a lot of glucose in the blood, that glucose is converted into glycogen and stored to be used when we are low in glucose. And again, when the gl blood glucose is low, the glycogen is converted into glucose and supplied in the blood or the fats that we store are converted into ketones in the liver to produce energy that is, can be used in the brain. How does high blood sugar level affect the brain? High blood sugar level, also known as hyperglycemia, damages the blood vessels in the brain that supply oxygen-rich blood to the brain cells. This reduces blood supply to the brain cells, leading to death of the brain cells. Too much blood sugar can lead to diabetes, type 2 diabetes which is common in adults. Type 2 diabetes is usually as a result of lifestyle, unhealthy diet or lack of exercise, as well as genetics. Diabetes damages nerves in the hands, eyes and feet, and in the same manner, it damages the nerves in the brain. This leads to death of brain cells. And death of brain cells causes problems with thinking, concentration, memory, learning, hormonal imbalance, the brain is thrown out of balance. Frequent episodes of high blood sugar level over time leads to serious mental decline, including vascular dementia. This also increases the risk of Alzheimer's disease, but we'll engage more on these conditions in our later videos. Let's now talk about hypoglycemia, the low blood sugar level. Low blood sugar level is extremely dangerous if left untreated. The brain doesn't have stores of glucose in the form of glycogen, therefore it solely relies on the blood sugar. When the brain doesn't get enough sugar, it shuts down oxygen supply to the brain and this leads to anoxic irritability, killing nerves in the brain. The effects of low blood sugar level are immediate. They include feeling shaky, dizzy, having troubles walking or talking, and irritability. Severe low blood sugar level can make you pass out or have scissors. It can put you into a coma. Chronic hypoglycemia, the long enough episodes of severe low blood sugar level, can cause long-term effects. These include neural degeneration, neurological issues, or tremors. In a certain research study, it was found that those with history of severe hypoglycemic events were at a greater risk of dementia in old age. What's your role in all this? How can you manage your blood sugar level? The first one, follow a healthy diet plan that fits your needs. Reduce on refined carbohydrates such as white bread, sweets, cookies, and so on. If you are a diabetic patient, diet is key to your well-being. Take foods that are rich in fiber with lots of vegetables and whole fruits. I mean 
whole fruits. Don't squeeze the juice out of fruits or blend it. Ensure that you take the fruits wholly because fruits have a lot of sugars. If you blend it, you'll take more. And at the same time, the sugars will be released almost immediate, immediately to your blood. But if you take whole fruits or food with a lot of fiber, then the digestion will take a process and the sugars will be released slowly into your blood. And that will not give your system headache since it is already struggling to maintain the blood sugars. The second one, maintain a healthy body weight. This can be monitored through BMI. BMI is calculated as the, your weight over your height squared. That is your weight in kilograms, then you divide by your height in meters squared. For example, if you weigh 65 kilograms, and your height is 1.6, then you calculate your BMI as 65 divided by 1.6 squared. Then you'll get 25.39. That's your BMI. This table will help you know whether your BMI is below normal, normal, or above normal. BMI of below 18.5 is underweight, BMI of 18.5 to 29.9 is normal. BMI of 25 to 29.9 is overweight. And BMI of 30 and above is obese. You should strive to stay lean and have a normal BMI. Overweight or obese increases the risk of type 2 diabetes. To maintain a normal BMI, Ensure that you monitor your diet. I'll always advise that you go for Mediterranean diet. It has all that you need. You should also engage in regular physical activities. That brings me to number three. Perform regular physical exercise. Physical exercise is important in maintaining a healthy body weight. It is also important in regulating your blood sugars. Number four. Keep your blood sugar level within the target. If you are a diabetic patient or you are pre-diabetic, your doctor will set you a personal blood sugar target that you have to maintain so that you don't go low or you don't go high. We've seen the effects of too low blood sugar level and too high blood sugar level. That's why you need to keep your blood sugar level within the targets. You also need to know your symptoms so that you don't get to the extreme ends because severe hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia are very detrimental to your health. Take your medication strictly as prescribed by your doctor. Sometimes you may feel well and abandon your medication, but that is not healthy. Let your doctor advise you on what to do. They are the ones to help you even change your medication if it is not working effectively. Sometimes you may feel well and abandon your medication, yet your body is still adjusting to the new normal. Remember, blood sugar regulation is a normal system in the body, but your body cannot function that way. So it needs help, and that medication is what helps it. Alongside with your diet and uh, physical activities and maintaining a healthy body weight, you'll function normally. In case you are having frequent episodes of low blood sugar level, the solution may not be taking a lot of sugars to adjust for it. You may need to take medication. If your medication is not working, your doctor will help you find out the reason as to why. Because sometimes low blood sugar level can be as a result of depression. So it needs to be cleared out. The next one is to avoid alcohol. But if you have to take it, then take it in moderation. Alcohol has a lot of calories, and remember it doesn't go through digestion. That energy is going to be directly released into the blood, and the blood will be overwhelmed. Especially if you are diabetic, that is critical. So avoid alcohol. Another thing that you need to avoid is smoking. Smoking is one of the risk factors to type 2 diabetes. It increases your risk of getting diabetes by 30 to 40 percent. We've come to the end. Thank you so much for listening in. 
I hope you've learned the relationship between brain performance and blood sugar level and you've noted that both very high and very low blood sugar level is detrimental to your brain and you've also learned how to maintain your blood sugar level within the target especially if you have type 2 diabetes. Thank you and let's meet in the next video.